today we're going to talk about the calibration of strain gauges. So one of the things you might be thinking at this point, and we've kind of hinted at this in lecture way, 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 way back in lecture one, was uh, it's really critical to kind of calibrate your apparatus, whether that be a scale, whether that be a um, uniaxial tension test, whether that be uh, kind of a accelerometer. You want to be able to calibrate this device um, uh, basically very, very well in order to kind of make these precise measurements. So one of the natural ways you could kind of think about how do we do this for strain gauges is, well, what if we have like kind of this known material like aluminum, a piece of, you know, piece of aluminum that we know the mechanical properties, we put our strain gauge on it, we pull, we increase the length by a certain, you know, delta L over L naught, so we know kind of a constant strain, and we could see if we could kind of reproduce that in the strain gauge that we have. Now, what's the issue with this? Well, Again, materials are, you know, uh, materials can vary from batch to batch, so that's one issue. What's the uncertainty kind of in these values? Uh, and again, you get, kind of get this propagation of air that could, you know, we, we, not, we might not know exactly is this, um, are these uncertainties overlapping or not? And people aren't really going to go through uh, kind of the work in order to kind of do that uncertainty analysis. But what we actually do in order to calibrate string gauges is, is this ingenious method where uh, we use basically uh, this kind of shunt calibration method. So I'm going to kind of try to zoom in here. Let's see. Let's zoom in here. Um, and it's really, really, really uh, kind of amazing in my mind. So when we're talking about uncertainties, resistors are going to have essentially no uncertainty. Uh, it's going to be very, very, very kind of difficult to uh, kind of calibrate or, you know, there's not going to be much uncertainty at all in a resistor. A resistor has a resistance, and that's what it is. <laughs> so... One way we know we have this relationship where strain is going to change as we change the resistance. So one way you can calibrate a strain gauge is imagine we have this Wheatstone bridge configuration, standard configuration as usual. But we could see in this arm here that we have a strain gauge, this shunt resistor here, RS, and then there's a switch here. So when the switch is open, what's the resistance in arm one? So when we're open. The resistance of R1 is just R1. But when it's closed, what's our resistance? So closed. Well, once it's closed, we have a scenario like this where, oops, here, strain gauge. So this is R1, this is RS parallel. So when I'm closed, I know I have R1, RS over R1 plus RS. So I have changed the resistance, and I can calculate that change in resistance by R1 over R1 RS over R1 plus RS minus the initial resistance here, which is just R1. So I can use this. This is my delta R. I can plug this into this expression here, where R initially is just equal to uh, R1, and I will get this expression. Actually, let's see it nicer in my... Uh, so you can see here, that's my delta R, R1, RS, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have, oops, excuse me. Uh, let me zoom back. Oh, excuse me. All right, there we go. I have this expression here. I plug in for that delta R, and I could get this. So this is the equivalent strain from that change in resistance. Now, notice that we're taking the absolute value here. So that's kind of a critical component, because when we're, we're increasing the resistance, there's no way we can kind of you know, essentially decrease that resistance. So that value, uh, we're going to see the absolute value in order to get the strain. Now, when you read a problem, typically you say once we kind of close this uh, kind of shunt resistor, we'll read like a voltage at one, and that's going to correspond to this, you know, strain at one. Then you'll do your operation. We'll either pressurize our pressure vessel. We'll pull our material. So when it's un, you know, basically when we close that shunt, when there's no load applied, we have a voltage one corresponding to strain one and that strain is just this strain right here but when we pull it now you're going to get another v2 so let's imagine that v1 is equal to one and that my v2 is equal to 10. And then there's also going to be a strain associated with again that change so now in order to calculate that strain my strain two is just going to be v2 over v1 times q or epsilon one that's it it's just kind of this ratio value here because it's going to be 10 times that amount. So if you see the problem, if you hear a shunt resistor, we're not shunt resistors. We are not using this expression here. We don't have what is our excit excitation voltage. We don't have that information. We are not going to use this expression. Right here. So if you see shunt, no, use this guy. All right. Next time we're going to get into some problems. So.
I'll see you then. Thanks. Bye.